today we're going to discuss the position of a Christian in church. What is your position? What is your goal? What should a Christian be looking at, or rather, what should a believer be looking for when they become a member of the Assembly of Believers? When they enter into the body of Christ. If we go to Exodus chapter 19, and we'll start at verse 6, we see when God chose Israel and called them out of the world, they were to be a special group of people. And in verse 6, it says, You will be for me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words you are to speak to the Israelites. A Christian is to be set apart. If we go to 2 Peter, or rather 1 Peter, chapter 2, this same sentiment is offered as being a kingdom of priests. Verse 9 of 1 Peter, chapter 2. But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Once you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Brothers and sisters, we are to be a kingdom of priests, a holy nation. When you enter into the covenant with Jesus Christ, you enter into a covenant of the royal priesthood. And if we go back to the Old Testament and look at the nation of Israel, we see that they have messed up. They had problems. They didn't live up to God's calling. They began worshiping idols. They continued in sin. And they didn't take to heart the calling of God to be a raw priesthood. If we look at the church today, we can see that there are many issues plaguing the church and not only plaguing the church, but plaguing society. If we are Christians, we can see the darkness that is in this world. There is a need for righteousness. There is a need for change. People that are not in the church can see that something is wrong. The question is, is the church ready? Is the church ready to present to this world a new direction, the right direction? And when I say the church, I'm talking about you and me. What do we have 
to offer the world as Christians. Are we just sitting in pews or at home listening to preachers preach? Or are we actively engaged in our local communities as lights in this world? If we go to Matthew chapter 28, we can see that after Jesus has risen, he spoke to his disciples. Verse 16. Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you and surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. This great commission as it is called is given to each and every believer. We are to go and make disciples of all nations. So what does this mean for you and I? How do we participate in this great commission? Are we to be missionaries to all the world as Paul or as Peter, as Barnabas, or as many of the apostles and early disciples in the church? Maybe. One thing is, we are to be lights in this world. In Matthew chapter 5, Christ told us that we are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Brothers and sisters, this is our job. If we are not called or feel drawn to be missionaries, we are to be lights in this world. We are to live our lives in such a way according to biblical scripture and instructions so that we are lights in this world. This is a part of being a holy nation, a raw priesthood. And this is one of the goals of Christianity. To make every believer into a participating member of God's holy nation, the royal priesthood. Now you may ask, well, how do I participate? What am I supposed to do? I'm not trained. If we go to 1 Corinthians chapter 12, the Apostle Paul tells us on how we have been empowered to be priests, to be a holy nation. And we become empowered to fill this position by the Holy Spirit. First, First Corinthians chapter 12 begins. Now about the gifts of the Spirit, 
brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be uninformed. In other words, Paul did not want us to be ignorant on the gifts of the Spirit, the empowerment that we receive when we believe. Verse 4, there are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit distributes them. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but in all of them and in everyone is the same God at work. Verse 7. Now to each one the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. To one there is given through the Spirit a message of wisdom, to another a message of knowledge by means of the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by that one Spirit, to another miraculous powers, to another prophecy, to another distinguishing between spirits, to another speaking in different kinds of tongues. All these are the work of one and the same Spirit, and he distributes them to each one just as he determines. In other words, brothers and sisters, we all have a special gift from the Holy Spirit. And this gift is to be used for the church, for the assembly of believers. Paul goes on to say in this same chapter about the diversity in the body. And when he speaks on this diversity, he ties in the gifts that we all individually have. We don't have all of the gifts. One may have one gift. Another person may have another gift. But they all work together, one in the same, for the benefit of the body of Christ. And if we start in verse 12, just as a body, though one has many parts, but all its many parts form one body, so it is with Christ. For we are all baptized by one spirit so as to form one body, whether Jews or Gentiles, slave or free. And we were all given the one spirit to drink. Even so, the body is not made up of one part, but of many. And what Paul is addressing here is the diversity in the body. And sometimes the discord that may exist in the body. One person may have one gift, another person may have another gift. And in this diversity, a discord may spring up. One may perceive their gift as being more beneficial than the other gift or the gift that another person has. And when Paul addresses this, he starts in verse 15. Now, if the foot should say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body. It would not for that reason stop being part of the body. And if the ear should say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body. It would not for that reason stop being part of the body. And Paul goes on to say that each part of the body is beneficial, whether it is an eye, an ear, a foot, a hand, a finger. We need all of those parts of the body to come together as a whole so that the body of Christ, the assembly of believers, can function. And if we go down to verse 26 or 25 in that same chapter, 
so that there should be no division in the body, but that its parts should have equal concern for each other. If one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honored, every part rejoices with it. If we are sitting in our churches and in our assemblies and we are not participating in furthering the gospel in the ministry of the word to the world as a priest, as a member of the body of Christ, then we are suffering and the body of Christ is suffering. And the reason being is that we each have a role. We cannot depend on the pastors that are in the pulpit to handle all of the issues that are facing the church. One person or a group of people that have been trained as teachers, leaders, and pastors cannot handle all of the situations that are facing the church. And we get into that further in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. We go down to verse 27. Now you are the body of Christ. We are the body of Christ. And each one of us, each one of you, is a part of it. And God has placed in the church, first of all, apostles, second, prophets, third, teachers, then miracles, then gifts of healing, of helping, of guidance, and of different kinds of tongues. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Do all work miracles? Do all have gifts of healing? Do all speak in tongues? And governments healings, organizations, the body of Christ, the church, the assembly of believers, the Christian community needs everyone to participate. And now, what does it mean to be a participating member in the body of Christ? If we go back to Genesis, when God presented the promise to Abraham, he told Abraham that I will make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky, and I will give them all these lands, and through your offspring, all nations of the earth will be blessed. He says again in Genesis 28, Verse 14, your descendants will be like the dust of the earth and you will spread out to the west and east and north and south. All the families of the earth will be blessed through you and your offspring. Brothers and sisters, we as Christians, as born again believers, are to be a blessing to this earth. We have to get out of thinking that the church is the four walls, is a building. This earth is the church. And as such, we have to branch out. Our priestly duties should not be confined to the four walls of the church. We should be good businessmen, scientists, politicians, judges, lawyers, school teachers, laborers, home builders, auto mechanics, owners of businesses. All of these duties will stem from being a priest. And wouldn't we all feel comfortable knowing that 
Our auto mechanic is a godly auto mechanic, is a Christian, values, morality. Wouldn't we feel more comfortable if some of our politicians and judges, federal, state, and local, were godly men and women tied to the community, tethered to the church? That would make society a better place. And I believe this is what God wanted through Abraham's descendants, not of the flesh, but of the spirit, faith, descendants of Abraham, the faithful. So as we move outside of the church, or rather the four walls of the church, we don't stop being a priest. We don't stop being a member of the body of Christ. And I think that is one of the issues with the Christian community. We have been trained, indoctrinated, conditioned into thinking that the church, the four walls of a building is the sum total of our Christian instruction, training, and community. Now things have branched out with the advent of technology, with the internet, but many in the body of Christ feel that the four walls of the church are the center of the Christian universe. This is not the case, brothers and sisters. We are all members of God's raw priesthood when we believe, when we accept Jesus Christ, and therefore as we move outside of the four walls of the church, we must take the gifts of the Spirit with us. We must take the tools, the power of God that is within us to help and bless our communities. We don't necessarily need to teach secular individuals the Bible, it's not a Bible instruction, but we must take the power of God that is in us and that is on us out into this world. As God told Abraham, I want you to be a blessing to all of the nations. All the families of the earth will be blessed through you and your offspring. We must raise godly children. We must have godly families so that they can go out into the community and make the necessary change, be the lights in the world as Christ instructed us. One of the reasons for the structure of the church being designed the way it is and the way it was stems from church history. It was almost a thousand years after the death of Christ before the Bible in its complete form was widely published. And almost 400 to 500 years after that the Bible being published, did we come into the invention of the printing press where the Bible could be mass produced in some limited fashion? And then 
even with the invention of the printing press, the Bible wasn't translated into the language that some communities could understand. In the 16th century, Martin Luther translates the Bible into German. And also during the 16th century, Tyndale translates the Bible from Greek into English. So if you didn't know Latin, or if you didn't know how to read Greek, you couldn't read the Bible. You didn't know the entire word of God. And this goes back into biblical history. If we look at the Ethiopian eunuch, he had a scroll of Isaiah. He was reading the book of Isaiah. He didn't have the whole Old Testament as we know it today. He had one scroll. He had one book. And he was taking that back to his land to study. So the early church and for over 16 centuries, the world did not have the entire Bible for their personal use. So we depended on the church and the church institution for our instructions. And a select group of men who were trained, who knew how to read, who went to seminary to instruct us. There was limitations on the church in some respects. Now, I'm not advocating breaking forward and, and having no structure, but what I'm saying is that we, as the body of Christ, as individuals, we have the Word of God in our homes, in our possessions, and we can go to all of the books of the Bible for ourselves and gain instruction. So this thinking that we are just sheep, which we are, Christ is the shepherd and we all are sheep and we have elders, but what are we growing to be? If we're not trying to be and growing to be or have the goal to be elders in the church community, experts, subject matter experts in the gifts that we have been individually given. We can't leave this to a limited number of men and women who are in the pulpits and in the seminaries around the world. The job is too great. As Christ said, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. So we must train and have the attitude of training ourselves for our specific role as a priest or as a member of the body of Christ. And I think the title of priest, if we all look at ourselves as a priest in some form or fashion, if we give ourselves that title, if we are that title, and the Bible gives us that title, then we will rise to the challenge individually and collectively. If we don't have the resources, we will know the places to go to in order to get help from our fellow brothers and sisters. If we have an issue that we're dealing with in our private lives, in our personal lives, in our professional lives, we can go to the community of believers and pull from the vast resources of knowledge and spiritual power 
that is put there to help solve our problems. As collective members of the body of Christ. So brothers and sisters, if we take anything away from this, we should sincerely consider the message and the information that I am giving you, which informs you that you have been upgraded. You have already been upgraded to the status of priest under the headship of Jesus Christ. He is the head priest, the high priest. And as members of the body of Christ, we have been given a task. We have been given a position in this world to be a blessing to it as lights, as priests, as teachers, as pastors, as leaders, as guides, as governments for the spiritual well-being of this world. So as we go out today and from henceforth, let us remember that we have the power, we have been empowered by God through Jesus Christ to be a blessing to this world. 